I seek not to know all the answers, but to understand the questions. Shaolin Temple, there are three kinds of men, students, disciples, and masters. Development of the mind can be achieved only when the body has been disciplined. To accomplish this, the ancients have taught us to imitate God's creatures. All creatures, the low and the high, are one with nature. If we have the wisdom to learn, all may teach us their virtues. From the crane, we learn grace and self-control. The snake teaches us suppleness and rhythmic endurance. The praying mantis teaches us speed and patience. And from the tiger, we learn tenacity and power. And from the dragon, we learn to ride the wind. As no two elements of nature are in conflict, so when we perceive the ways of nature, we remove conflict within ourselves and discover a harmony of body and mind in accord with the flow of the universe.
You are the new student. Come closer. You cannot see. You think I cannot see. Of all things, to live in darkness must be the worst. Fear is the only darkness. Never assume that because a man has no eyes, he cannot see. Close your eyes. What do you hear? I hear the water. I hear the birds. Listen for the color of the sky. Look for the sound of the hummingbird's wing. Search the air for the perfume of ice on a hot day. If you have found these things, you will know. Do you hear your own heartbeat? No. Do you hear the grasshopper which is at your feet? Old man, how is it that you hear these things? Young man, how is it that you do not? Where does your pebble walk to, grasshopper? It walks. Its journey is to nowhere. Each journey begins and also ends. Then the ending is the bottom of the pool. Does not the pebble entering the water begin fresh journeys? It seems unceasing. Such is the journey through life. It begins, it ends. Yet fresh journeys go forth. Young Cain, when I was a boy, I fell into a hole in the ground and I was broken and could not climb out. I might have died there, but a stranger came along and saved me. He said it was his obligation that for help he had once received, he must in return help 10 others, each of whom would then help 10 others. So that good deeds would spread out like the ripples from a pebble in a pond. I was one of his ten, and you became one of mine. And now, I pass this obligation on to you.
The scissors cut the paper. The paper covers the rock. The rock crushes the scissors. Is not playing a child's game a waste of time? In games, children teach sometimes more than books. Calm, instruct an old man and yourself. Rock crushes scissors. <laughs> look beyond the game as you look beneath the surface of the pool to see its depths. Each in turn conquers the other. There is no stronger or weaker. This is the harmony of nature and not a waste of time. I will treasure this lesson, Master. I have three treasures which I hold and keep. The first is mercy, for from mercy comes courage. The second is frugality, from which comes generosity to others. The third is humility, for from it comes leadership. Strange treasures. How shall I hold them and keep them? Memory. <laughs> No, Grasshopper, not in memory, but in your deeds. Master, I am troubled. We learn to make powerful the force of our bodies. Yet we are taught to reverence all against whom we may use such force. When your life is threatened, or the innocent life of another, you will be prepared to defend them. Being thus prepared, better than others, should I not always stand and fight? Ignore the insulting tongue. Duck the provoking blow. Run from the assault of the straw. Are these not the actions of a coward? The wild boar runs from the tiger, knowing that each, being well armed by nature with deadly strength, may kill the other. Running, he saves his own life and that of the tiger. This is not cowardice. Is the love of life.
Master, how does one find the strength within himself? By being one with all that is without himself. Yet these sometimes contend. When fire meets ice, which prevails? Ice. Yet in dying, does not the ice becoming water also die? Or the fire die? That prevails which refuses to know the power of the other. Where fear is, does not danger also live? And where fear is not, does not danger also die? Where the tiger and the man are two, grasshopper, he may die. Yet where the tiger and the man are one, there is no fear, there is no danger. For what creature, one with all nature, will attack itself? In the pond, there are some lotuses which stand above the water. And though their roots feed, they are themselves untouched by it. Some others have risen only to the water's level. And others are still underwater. Shall I seek to measure these differences, Master, that I may treat them differently, each according to his growth? Examine the flower. Is not the flower in each position yet a flower? Shall I then treat each man the same? As far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all. Yet the flower beneath the water knows not the sun. Other men not knowing me, will find me hard to understand. Grasshopper, be yourself, and never fear thus to be naked to the eyes of others. What is simple is simply seen. Yet, know that men so often mask themselves, that what is simple is rarely understood. The dust of truth swirls and seeks its own cracks of entry. Accept the ways of others, Respect first your own. Master, our bodies are prey to many needs. Hunger, thirst, the need for love. In one lifetime, a man knows many pleasures, a mother's smile in waking hours, a young woman's intimate searing touch, and the laughter of grandchildren in the twilight years. To deny these in ourselves is to deny that which makes us one with nature. Shall we then seek to satisfy these needs? Only acknowledge them and satisfaction will follow. To suppress a truth is to give it force beyond endurance. Bye.
Where is evil? In the rat, whose nature it is to steal grain, or in the cat, whose nature it is to kill the rat? The rat steals. Yet for him, the cat is evil. And to the cat, the rat. Yet, Master, surely one of them is evil. The rat does not steal. The cat does not murder. Rain falls. The stream flows. A hill remains. Each acts according to its nature. Then is there no evil for men? Each man tells himself that what he does is good, at least for himself. Grasshopper, a man may tell himself many things, but is a man's universe made only of himself? If a man hurts me, and I punish him, perhaps he will not hurt another. And if you do nothing? He will believe he may do as he wishes. Perhaps, or perhaps he will learn that some men receive injury, but return kindness. Master, how may I walk a peaceful path when the world is seldom peaceful? Peace lies not in the world, Grasshopper, but in the man who walks the path. But in my path may be men not filled with peace. Then seek a different path. And if at each turn appear those who would be violent and do not love peace, to reach perfection, a man must develop equally compassion and wisdom. But, Master, how do I not contend with a man who would contend with me? In a heart that is one with nature, though the body contends, there is no violence. And in the heart that is not one with nature, though the body be at rest, there is always violence. Be, therefore, like the prow of a boat. It cleaves the water, yet it leaves in its wake water unbroken. Master, what is the best way to meet the loss of one we love? By knowing that when we truly love, it is never lost. It is only after death that the depth of the bond is truly felt. And our loved one becomes more a part of us than was possible in life. Are we only able to feel this toward those whom we have known and loved a long time? Sometimes a stranger known to us for moments spark our souls to kinship for eternity. How can strangers take on such importance to our souls? Because our soul does not keep time. It merely records growth.
Love cannot measure itself until the hour of parting. Trust comes from within you. Is not to trust, to rely on someone of whom you know nothing. With each ending comes a new beginning. I seek not to know all the answers, but to understand the questions.